Welcome everyone to this video about relative members in SkySub Structural 3D. Let's get right into it. So the relative member function is actually a really useful tool, uh, just another one in the arsenal for our users looking to further increase their modeling speed. To, to access the relative member function, uh, you need to start with at least one node. So right here we have node 1, uh, just beginning at the origin 0, 0, 0. Uh, to bring up the relative member function menu, you just simply click on the node and either press R on your keyboard or right click and go down to add relative member. This is the relative member menu. Uh, this is movable. You can move this around the model space wherever you want, even onto you know other windows over here. Uh, always remember to hover over tool tips when you see them. So um, for each method that we're going to be talking about in a second, you can hover over this tool tip and it'll tell you more about, about this method. Um, so speaking of that, we have there's two main ways to add relative members. One using superposition or you know the relative member function and the other being uh, in a 2D plane using angles and member lengths. So to start, make sure relative or REL is selected here on the dropdown and make sure your node is selected. Obviously if, if relative members are selected um, or the menu is up then this node will have to be selected. So you can see in here in the input there's delta x, delta y, and delta z. And when you click in uh, to the field it'll, it'll tell you basically what uh, the distances need to be. So um, this is what we need to input. So because our node is at 0, 0, 0, um, what adding a relative member does using the relative member function is you write in the delta x, delta y, and delta z. So you write in the change in x, change in y, and change in z from the selected node. So for instance, if we wanted to create a member starting at 0, 0, 0 with node 1 and ending at 4, 8, 2, you'd simply type in 482 and that is going to put a node at 482 and it's going to connect node 1 and now node 2 with a member. You can also see when when you have this it, sh it should be oops it should have a um, there we go projection line. So when you're ready to hit enter you can either click this green check or just hit enter so now we've created our relative member. So you can see at node 2, that was what we put in here because we started at 0, 0, 0. Now our next node is at 4, 8, 2. A really useful function um, within the relative member function is now that you've created a relative member, it has the second node selected. So you can chain members as much as you want. So you have now you have node 2 selected. You can create another relative member off of this based on those delta values and you can keep changing this and adding chained members so you know if I'm just gonna start putting in some values here 369 check mark you know 110 5 or 6 you can see again it's going to show you the dotted line projection and it will also show you the member length so same thing if we have 110 and 6 that member length is 11.7 feet. So like I said, you can continue to change these or chain these members along, making whatever type of string structure you want. I'll X out of that, and then let's go to the ISO view. So you can see we have this very, very complicated stringed structure. I mean, you can really make whatever you want using that function. So let's go over the other function now. Delete all this other stuff. So that's the, that's, that's the first way. That's the most common way. Um, let's bring up the relative member function again. Again, select the, select the node, bring up the menu. The second method is using one of these 2D planes and an angle and a member length. So actually what we'll do is we'll go to the f go to the front. So now we're operating in the x y plane. So to use this method, you click on the drop down, go to x y. We're operating in x y plane. We need to select this as our method. 
Now for this, you can see the input has changed. Now it's asking for an angle and a length. So whenever you're operating with this method, like angle method, um, it's always going to measure the angle from the horizontal axis whenever you're whenever you're operating in. So because we're operating in x y, it's going to be measured from the x axis going in a counterclockwise direction. So if we want to create a member, instead of putting the superposition of that node, you can simply put in the angle, say 30 degrees, and then the length of that member. So if you you know you don't know the x and y uh, values, you just know the length of the member and the angle, you can type in 30 degrees and then 10 feet. And you'll see a projection of, of you know, you can, you can tell that this is about 30 degrees, so we'll hit OK. And similar to the other method, you can continually chain members in this plane. You can also switch to any other method while you're in relative member to basically do the same thing. So if we wanted to stick in the XY plane, you can even do zero if you wanted, but let's say, you know, now we'll go straight up and we'll do six feet and maybe it's 80 and it's eight feet long. So again, this is an entire XY plane. We wanted to switch the plane. Now we're in the XZ plane, so it's going to be basically in and out. So we'll say zero degrees, 10, uh, nine degrees, 20. And you can continuously chain these members. So you can see here now we have we just built this very complicated and weird structure just by using an angle and a length. And we did that among two different planes. So both both options are very useful for certain structure generation. You can also generate multiple relative members at the same time using the same relative members functions. So for example, let's let's create some relative members stemming from all the nodes on top of this platform. So what we'll do is we can select all the nodes. And if you select members, that's fine. Uh, it's only going to create relative members generating from the nodes that are selected and not the members themselves. So we have those nodes selected, press R. And then similar to the previous case where you just have one node, you can type in the delta x, delta y, and delta z that you want the new end nodes to be at, or the, the change in those the positions. So we hit enter. We just created nine new nodes, all, all, all using the relative member function and traveling 10, 10, and 10 in their respective axes. You can also use the, the plane function as well so we're operating in the XY plane here. You can use the same function to um, generate multiple members as well. So let's say 30 degrees and another you know, 15 feet of member. Now we just created in the XY plane more relative members. And similar to before, you can, you can chain these as much as you want to meet your structure's needs. So with that, that summarizes the relative member function video. Thanks for watching.